We got to go old school on this thing. Oh no, here we go. What is up everybody? We are back again with another episode of DTV. So today I will learn the fate of the 442, whether or not this thing is going home or not. But either or, I still have a day ahead of me. It's a nice sunny day out here. I'm gonna get to cracking on the Malaboom. So today I'm gonna continue with the install on the intake. I NASCAR styled the heads off, which I'll show you guys um, yesterday, but they needed the heads because they needed the springs and the retainers and everything off of the good running heads to put those on the bare heads that I'm having done. So I didn't know that, I had to rip the heads off, had no time for videos or any of that because I had to be in LA yesterday morning. And the 91 sucks for traffic if you are in Southern California, if you're not, you pretty, it's a freeway where you don't move, it's not really a freeway, it should be called like a park way, I guess. But, got that all done yesterday, so I'll show you where we're at. Then I went and had to get another set of just they're junk heads, they're still good, but they're dirty and crappy, but it'll, that'll allow me to mock everything up, and then I'm supposed to get my heads back on Saturday, so then I can slam the good heads on, have everything mocked up, so essentially it should just be bolting stuff together at that point. So we'll see how we go. That's what I'm gonna work on. I'll kinda show you where we're at, and then I will just kinda keep progress coming through the day. Stick around. So here is where we are at. This is actually, you can see, uh, it's a dirty ass crusty head. This is the one. I'm just throwing on here for mock-up This is how the car was when I realized I haven't showed you guys any of this stuff So you can see this thing is all dirty. It was just sitting out, but I need this for mock-up So I can put the intake manifold and have spots to bolt everything down to so this is the other uh, Pretty much bad head that I'm gonna throw on so here's all my parts Like I said, I just grenaded this thing apart yesterday as fast as I could because I had another appointment and things to go to and then here is my beautiful intake manifold that I have decided I don't think I'm going to paint it. Maybe I'll paint the brackets or something, my sweet, sweet pink color that everybody loves so much. But um, I don't know. Well, time is kind of an issue, so I, I like to screw off and do stuff like that because I think it's funny, but I'd rather go racing than, than have a hilarious car that's sitting in my driveway. So we'll see how we go. But if I have time to sling some paint, you know it's getting painted. But I'm gonna get rolling, so I figured I would show you this. This is my bag of fittings. So all of my AN stuff, leftover pieces, hoses, fittings, it all goes in this. I should probably get a better storage method, but this is what I have. This is my fuel pressure regulator. I said I was gonna run one. This is a magnet fuel unit. This is a very nice piece. Although I did buy this at the swap meet, and I got it for $40. And um, so anybody that's gonna complain and say, oh, you're using high-end stuff, nobody can afford this, whatever. Nanny, nanny, boo-boo, dude, this is 40 bucks. If you found one like that, you might as well put it on your junk car too, right? Plus it's purple and blue, come on, that's awesome. So I'm gonna go through, rummage through here, um, figure out some sort of mounting bracket for this guy, and then I'll probably rob the fittings and everything. These are the old fuel lines that I had that ran on this guy. So we're just gonna probably steal fittings, use some of this tubing and readapt everything to work with this. So this is what it's boiled down to on my bracket making. We gotta go old school on this thing. Let's see if I can hold on to this camera because uh, I don't have anything that'll bend this. It's stainless. Oh no, here we go. Burning down the house, dude. So, let's see if we can flatten it out a bit better. I can probably do it better not doing it one-handed. But yeah, we're going old school on this guy. I got all trigger happy on this thing and I checked the hole size, which I should have checked before I put all that effort into it, and the hole's too small. This is stainless and it's thick, and I'm not going to uh, waste a drill bit. So, plan number two. I'm going to find some aluminum and make a bracket. Alrighty, here we go. So on this bad boy, obviously nice and not tight. Oh, oh no, oh no. Redo. Um, anyway. I just made a little L bracket out of aluminum. Oh, now it's gonna flop over and I'm gonna look awesome. Okay, so there we go. So, something like that. And then this guy is my feed line, so it'll go up here. And then I'm gonna tee it off, and it'll turn and then feed this, which is my, obviously, fuel rail. And then on the other side of the tee, it'll just loop around and feed into this guy, and that'll bleed the pressure off for the rails. Um, and I will plug this, it's adjustable, 
and then it'll come out of the bottom down here and it goes into this guy which is my return so that is our fuel setup and if it doesn't make sense now it will when I put all the hard line on it and then I actually called magnet fuel to make sure I could clock it like this because I didn't want any issues I figured since it was pressure it'd be fine but better safe than sorry and then this is the vent tube so he said not to plug it this vent to the atmosphere so this will let your air or whatever out of the line so it's gonna be awesome yeah hopefully it doesn't let fuel out huh that'd be bad but alrighty so it is Friday I got my errands done yesterday went to G&J aircraft so if you're in California they're in Ontario those guys know their stuff they make hoses have all the fittings they got everything you need to build some really cool stuff and then it's all it's all on you at that point but they know their stuff and they won't even beat you up too bad if you pepper them with dumb questions ask me how I know you know maybe I asked one or two that weren't so good but let me spin you around show you some of the fittings and then obviously you saw the fuel pressure regulator, but that's where we're at today. So let me show you guys that and then we'll uh, keep on rolling. All right, so here's my fuel pressure regulator you guys have already seen. The aluminum bracket that I made because uh, beating the hell out of that other one didn't really work out. And then I've got, let me dump a couple of them out, I don't want to make a terrible mess. But these are all the, the nuts and the, the collars. I'm actually just going to use this as my T, so I'll just come in here go out the other side and then this will be the regulated portion and that'll just make it simple and clean. Doing it that way I think for me is fine with the NA. If it was forced induction I would feel good about having this after the fuel supply but since it's NA I can just turn the pressure up a little bit if we have any fuel drop on the other end it's not a big deal because we're not really pushing it that hard so that's where I'm at that's what I'm gonna do. Alright for all you guys that know about this you can skip it. For those of you that don't this is Aluminum tubing, otherwise known as hard line, I use this for fuel. Um, and I have a soft line like this that's a jumper that goes from the frame up to a bulkhead. And then where it's mounted to the motor, you can run hard line because it moves with the motor. Well, as soon as it's on the motor and it all moves together, that's where the hard line comes into play. Um, looks nice, gets the job done, it keeps everything where it's gonna go. You can use whatever you like, whatever makes it easy for you. I just I actually enjoy making this stuff. I know a lot of guys hate hard line. I think it looks cool. Juice is worth the squeeze to me. So I'm gonna make some hard lines. These are the tools to get it done. Tubing cutter, bender, and then these are the, the fittings. And then I also have a flare tool right over here. 37 degree flare tool. And this is professional grade stuff. The cheap ones suck. So just spend a couple bucks, get a good one. So here we go. I got the hard lines all in. That's why these heads are on, so I can put the manifold on and then do my hard line. So this is where this guy's going to live. I don't know if you can see how the hard lines are on there. So it comes up. This is my feed line because it's a bigger line, and that's returned. That's the original fuel line. So it comes up here into the bottom one, which zigzags around and goes into the feed side of this. Out of here and into the feed rail where this dead heads, so when the pressure builds up, It'll open the bottom and then go back down into this guy, which is my return. So we should be good to go. I'll just cut the little bracket down there so uh, it's the right length because it's a little long. These guys are all cool. And then uh, maybe trim this a little bit and then go check my list of junk to do. So making good progress. All right, so I have this piece that was off of some other throttle pedal assembly. And this will work with the throttle body I have. This one's different from the other, the factory. GM1, so this one takes a little ball that goes in there, so I'll just change the cable out and then this will work on the throttle body, but I have to change the gas pedal in the car because the one I made is janky and it's not real smooth and now that the car actually makes some horsepower, it's kind of dangerous because there's a spot where it goes from nothing to like full pedal. America! Not good, so I'm going to go rummage the junkyard and see if I can get a pedal that I can make work in my car. And then while I'm out, I'm going to go to the bicycle shop and just get a new cable that looks like this. Restring that in, hopefully with a new pedal, and uh, then we'll have a gas pedal. All right, so here we are. Two quick things. First, you will note my awesome beanie and my aviators, and I look like the Unabomber. Well, that's because I'm going to the junkyard, and it's windy, and I do not feel like chasing my hat through piss puddles. Um, so I will just look kind of hokey, maybe a little sketchy, and we will go on some junkyard adventures. And secondly, the reason I'm at the junkyard is any good drag racer or anybody that watches drag racing knows if you're gonna drag race, you gotta come with a bag of excuses, like a really big one for all the losses, especially like a car like mine, because I'm pretty much just gonna lose the whole time. 
and I need a gas pedal anyway for the car. So I'm gonna go see if I can find one out of a Honda. And then that way, every time I lose, I can just tell people, dude, I've got a Honda gas pedal. What do you want? What do you want from me? Come on. And so I found the car. Something other. So nothing says fast like purple, some T tops. So I have the gas pedal out of it. And uh, I just added even more value and horsepower to my car. All right, guys. I made my final decision. I got two gas pedals. One was a Mazda Protege. And I thought that might be a little too fast for what I'm looking for. So I found a early 90s Suzuki X90. It looks like a giant roller skate and it had t-tops and it was purple and i was like man nothing says speed and power like a purple suzuki with t-tops so definitely add some value with that some horsepower points style points i don't know i i think it was fate that led me to that purple suzuki and every time i push down the accelerator it's going to be like that suzuki is just letting them have it so i was going to look inside this guy for a gas pedal but we all know what happens on the old Toyota Prius. America! Alan! The brake! Oh! Just slowed the car down! Alright, here we go. We are back from the junkyard. This is my Suzuki X90 gas pedal. And I kind of wanted it because of the shape, and then this is actually a little rubber pad, so it kind of fits the car. Other than it is really gonna, it's gonna be fast. I mean, let's just face it. But, I had to get a throttle cable, which is a $9 Odyssey slick brake brake cable. So this is my new piece that I need to run. And you can see down there that has a little ball. So I'm actually just going to cut this end off, pull it out, and then I'll use this piece to go into here. This will attach to the throttle body, and then it'll go back, obviously, to the gas pedal. Alright, let's take a little adventure. I will show you guys what we're replacing. We're replacing the... We're gonna replace the Franken pedal that I built for the zip tie drags. So that, my friends, is the Franken pedal. Uh, I built this on a Friday night, pretty much before I had to go to the races because I didn't have a gas pedal and I kind of had one that resembled that and I figured I'll just get it done. The only problem I have with it is it, uh, it's not very smooth because obviously the way I built it and it, it kind of sticks. So it'll get to a certain point it goes, like right there, and then you got to push it and it wants to go past. Well, that's fine when you don't make any horsepower, but when you make decent horsepower, you don't want a gas pedal where you're trying to push on it and then it just lets go. Uh, bad things, I would imagine, in like parking lots and whatnot would be trying to do a little U-turn or just kind of sneak up on something and all of a sudden you're wide open. America! And slamming into parking blocks or who knows what. So, out with Franken pedal, in with the X90 Suzuki. It's going to be good. All right, everybody, so this is where we ended up for the day. I've got Franken pedal out. I have the X90 gas pedal that's all janky and some weird corners and stuff, but I figured all this would give me length and what I needed, and then this is actually metal. So we're gonna cut it off, bend it, do whatever we gotta do. We'll put this bad boy in, boom, boom, boom. We're gonna be rolling in no time. So Franken pedal is out, this one is going in. It's a little late today to start all the fab and stuff. I ran all the errands, so we've got hard lines done, intake manifold on, throttle body in, I've got the routing for the throttle cable. Now it's a matter of getting this gas pedal to work in the car. Then we're looking pretty good. Then it's on to heads, content sensor, get everything wrapped up. The oil pressure gauge mounted properly. Tuck the computer away, mount the OBD2, and then I'm gonna be placing an order tonight for a ultra gauge. It'll plug into the OBD2. It'll read the rest of the sensors that the computer sees so I know what the coolant temperature is. AITs, all that fun stuff, and then if I have issues with the sensors, at least I'll know if they're doing weird stuff because we'll have an ultra gauge. So that's where we're at. That's where we ended up. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Stick around, keep it locked, like it, subscribe it, share it with the world. I'm out.